Hello there guys, Elite Legionaria here, bringing you some Medieval 2 Total War Siege action. Now uh, this is a 3 vs 2 siege, um, it's a wooden castle siege if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm playing as the Scotland, Scotland, I am playing as Scotland, um, and our opponents are both Venice, one being Paladin Bob there, he's bringing his, um, these two units this matter crossbowmen out, but um, my ally here, Captain Invisible, who is one of my loyal um, medieval two viewers. So many thanks for watching, and it was great playing with you, Captain. Um, we're going to try trap this matter crossbowman between my male knights here and his guys here. Now he does actually forget about them, I think. So I'm able to catch them, interestingly enough. Um, and here comes the captains. General's bodyguard for the Holy Roman Empire there, and we're going to sandwich those um, Venetian units there. So that should destroy those pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, he's playing as the Holy Roman Empire, and I believe it was Helen and Bob, and where's the other guy? I it was it was Pike and Shot, I think. Where is he? Yeah, Pike and Shot. Um, and of course, I'm joined by Swedish Landsknecht, who's playing as the Moors. Now the rules for this were no artillery. I wanted to make this more challenging for the attackers, so we have to use um, siege gear. Um, we're just going to make this pretty tough, and I've got about... I think they had 50k and we had 45k. So they've got 25k individually, we've only got um, 15. So they're very strong, and because they're both Venus, this is going to be a really hard game. So anyway, um, we managed to route Bob there. Now I think... Um, what I'll do here actually is I'll pause this while I outline the remainder of our armies because I just it was it's pretty action packed at the start there. So I believe I led a line of I think it was six noble swordsmen, and I had um, one, two, three, four, five to mount a few knights, and I had one, two, three, four. I believe it was four Highland, Highland, um, Highlanders basically, and then I had two two mailed knights, and I had three Highland archers here just doing the missile work. The Swedish Lansnick, he's got let's see, he's got some of Christian Guard, he's got two, he's got two Sudanese tribesmen there, fourth one there, three desert archers there, Sudanese gunner there, just mounted Arab cavalry, and then. Uh, some two more, so it's five just made a Christian Guard, and he's got four urban militia here and a general's bodyguard. I think that's everything for Swedes. And then uh, Captain Invisible, he's got Halberd militia. Um, to be honest, um, both me and Swedes were not really pleased to see him bring these. Um, they're okay when you're defending in a siege, but when you're attacking, they're really terrible on the walls. Um, so I'm not really sure why he, he's I know he uses them to pretty good effect in the field battles but I find that they're pretty useless on the siege when they're sieging especially when they're attacking they're not getting that great defending and he's got some just of Peril Knights Feudal Knights more Feudal Knights just made of Feudal Knights Peasants doing that work Feudal Knights uh, yeah, mostly just some Feudal Knights Puppies Crossman over here and I do believe he split his force in two sections yes He's got a Peril Knight there, uh, it's a Metal Care variant, more Held Militia, some Dismounted Peril Knights, some more Puppies, Crossbowmen, and another Peasant. Um, Paladin and Pike have a bunch of Venetian Archers on this side of the wall, uh, some Stradiots, some Puppies, Crossbowmen, some Pike Militia, and a ton load of Venetian <laughs> Infantry, and a Standard here in the centre as well, and some Broken Lances. It's basically, their army's mixed on. I believe Bob had about eight to 10 Venetian Heavy Infantry, and then all the maxed out, I might add, um, the second most powerful infantry unit with max stats, and then I believe um, Pike had about four, so there's 14 of the second most powerful infantry in this game on max stats, we're having a hell of a hard game ahead of us, I can tell you that, we gave him too much money I think to be honest, Our enemy have no Our men are under attack. We must act now. so anyway, um, this is pretty quick for as far as a siege goes, that's why I'm willing to upload it, because I don't don't upload a lot of sieges because sieges take forever to do. Um, but this one was a lot of fun, so I'm starting to climb up onto the walls. I do believe Swedes might actually just about be on the walls in some places. He's not got as much stuff on his flank side as, at the moment um, as we do on ours, but he will they will end up coming out on them. So uh, he's actually made his approach with the Christian Guard, which is interesting. I probably would have started with the Sudanese tribesmen and the urban militia first try and preserve the best for last. 
Which is what I'm doing over there, it's by my noble, noble swordsman at the back. So, um, where is there? The siege towers are at the wall, but uh, here we go. Here we go, so here's some of my feudal knights diving off to begin battle with Bob and his um, Venetian heavy infantry. And I know Bob would have been loving this, the ultimate defence, uh, making it impossible by giving himself tons of the really super strong infantry and then bucket loads of upgrades on them. Uh, it's going to be really hard. So here the Christian Guard are uh, taking on these guys. I'm going to do what I can to catch everyone's fight. Um, but having observed this fight after we, you know, as we did it, I actually think we ended up giving them too much money and made this way too hard for ourselves. But whatever, it was a great game anyway. Uh, as you can see, the feudal knights of the Holy Roman Empire are coming up this up the ladders here, and so are my um, my Highlanders. And as you can see, this tower is set on fire. It's pretty cool. Um, and we're fighting off these dudes as best as we can here. So Scotland versus Venice. I believe it was a total of 14 of them in the whole game of Venetian Heavy Infantry and believe you me it's one hell of a good unit and that was, that was proved exceedingly hard to deal with. Uh, here are these Sudanese tribes, I mean these guys are not going to be able to, not got a hope in, hope in hell of actually surviving against these um, Venetian Heavy Infantry, but they're a cool unit, a very cool light infantry unit. So we're kind of scrapping it out for the walls and doing what we can here. Um, I believe me and Swedes tried a little trick here of sandwiching this unit of Venetian Heavy Infantry between his his guys and my guys here, but they managed to fight both our hordes off, if I remember. Let's check on Captain Invisible down this side. I believe he's um, been pretty mopped up here. They're sending Stradiots out, so he's had to get himself back, back. I believe he's gone over here, but his guys are routing really quickly um, because he hasn't brought enough sword and, you know, dismounted Imperial Knights and Feudal Knights, he hasn't brought enough of them, he's brought these hell of militia and they're going to get pretty smoked um, in this kind of fight, so I think he I think he probably should have brought, you know, because I mean, Halberds are good in field battles and defensive situations, but when they're made to um, to tack on walls and stuff like this, they're really not very good at all. Um, so, I mean, a lot of his guys, um, he just doesn't have that numbers thing, so... His feudal knights will fight hard and well, but they're not going to be able to defeat um, a lot of these guys. Just like our guys are not going to be able to do it as well. So a lot of scrapping going on on the walls here. Tons of stuff going on. I'm trying to get you the best shots as I can here, guys. Um, I do apologise I'm swinging the camera around a lot, but uh, I don't want to really miss stuff if possible. So uh, I believe one of my Hollanders was routing over here, but I am about to destroy this, well not destroy it, but I'm fighting it off pretty well. And because they've got men near these towers, we can't seize them, so we're taking some pretty hefty losses to them. I'm trying to sandwich these guys, but not really having much effect there. Swedes and I are not really doing much damage at all. Um, let's see some nice close-ups of Swedes archers here. They're not a great archer, but they do look quite cool. I've always thought they look quite cool, but they're not a great archer unit. And neither is accuracy doing much for us. So how are Swede sides going? Um, I do believe he might be sending the General's bodyguard just to check on Stradiox. He doesn't want them disrupting him too much because that could be a nuisance for him. But he actually does quite well for the most part. Um, but Bob's got these... I mean, look at the upgrades. He's got maximum upgrades on these Venetian Heaven Ocean. And I believe he had... I think he had at least 8, but he might have even had about 10... And I remember Pike saying he had four. So there's a lot of Venetian Heavy Infantry on max upgrades here. As you can see, just tanked up with upgrades. And he's got a bunch of Feudal Knights as well, which are no slouches. We've got them too, but these are more upgraded and in a better, better position. So that's not going well for us. So I managed to breach here. I do believe my archers are basically running out of ammo. As we fire in here. But we're holding our own, but... Um, if we're honest, it's, it's, we're going to get worn down before we can do much. To be honest. Um, we're just sort of all holding on here on the walls. It's just a big scrap for the walls at the moment, and there's not really a lot doing. We probably should have actually brought some um, some artillery, at least one. But I wanted to use siege equipment. I just wanted to make it a bit of a challenge. The other guys are up for it as well. So, As you can see, one of my feudal knights has been to throw the towel in there. And let's see, my guys are scrapping it out here pretty good, but um, we we wanted to try and stay close as we could, but the problem was um, you can only put so many towers on the walls. Like, for instance, in this section of the wall, you can only have one there. Um, 
and one there and one there. You can't have like, for instance, you can't have like one, two, all on the same area. You've got to be just spaced out on each interval. So we can't get a lot of stuff there. Um, and this is tower fighting is like difficult. So um, what we should have probably done was uh, give ourselves some artillery. Just some, like what I wish it does, give ourselves some catapults or trebuchets and ballista and stuff. Not gunpowder cavalry. I mean, cavalry. Gunpowder like culverins and cannons and stuff because that would have been just too easy because these wooden walls wouldn't stand a chance. Um, but I kind of like doing the smaller sieges like towns, villages, little castles, moat and baileys and things like that. Um, because the thing is, the, the other sieges like castles, fortresses, and citadels, epic as they are, they just take so long. Um, me and Swedes did one against Lavernicus the other day, and it took three hours to complete. Um, it won't be three hours long in, the, in, a, in a replay, and I'm, I'm still debating whether I'll record that, but what I'll do is I'll obviously edit crap loads of it so it's nowhere near that long, because I refuse to make a video that's three hours long, um, because I simply couldn't commentate for three hours, and I'm sure it would bore everyone absolutely shitless. So, um, and I don't think anyone would want to listen to me rabbit on about tactics and battles games and repeat myself a million times in three hours so I would definitely edit it so it was probably absolutely no more than one hour at tots so even less than that because it's pretty hard to record for that long um, but essentially they got the gates blocked here um, they've defeated us on this wall as you can see Captain Invisible's army's pretty much defeated everywhere me and well me and um, Swedes are still pretty good Mostly because we just brought more heavy sword infantry than he did, um, and that's why we're able to survive longer. I mean, as fun as it is to use halberds and various other units, it's just they're not as effective. They're really not. So these halberds of his are just not going to be able to compete. Now we brought, I believe, yeah, we brought Swedes was the smartest one out of us here. Really, well, it's not necessarily that his move is smarter, but it just turned out better because he only brought one cavalry, while we brought two. Um, and the problem with that is. I mean, we couldn't be sure, because, I mean, we've played Pike and Shot before, and he does like to come out sometimes with calves, so we had to have some calves of our own to make sure we didn't get charged out, um, and we were trying to prepare for that, but um, he didn't do it this time, so we had more calves than we needed. So over here, um, some of these broken lances coming, as you can see, they're brought, bringing in reserves, and a lot of missile fire coming on us. Um, as you can see, this unit's managed to fight off two two lots of us, but Swedes is bringing in some dismounted Arab cav here, but they're not going to be much good because they're a spear unit. Um, we've got to fight onwards, though. So I decided to attack the gate here. I'm not going to get through there, obviously, but well, I might be able to. I was thinking if I can breach these guys and come in behind and break through them. I tried going up here on the walls, try and knock these guys down, then come down. Just try and knock this gate section down. Um, then I can go and assist Swedes or something on the walls so we can be free to maybe do something. So I'm bringing guys this way to try and keep my way through it. But um, as I said, we're not really getting past the walls in this fight. And we have won certain sections for sure. I mean, Swedes has actually won this section over here. and I've won some of my sections over here as well. But it has taken tons of reserves to get it done. And Bob, and that's just taking down like three or four of Bob's Venetian Heavy Infantry when he's still got like that many left and then in addition to all the other sword units they've still got and Pike's army as well so um, we're in for a pretty tough ride basically uh, the thing is my guys shouldn't have trouble with these broken lances broken lances have got some good attack and defense stats but they don't have the same morale stats as feudal knights so they should be able to defeat them pretty, pretty handily um, if you look at that, I mean, Broken Lances look very cool, though, because they use uh, the Gothic Plate, basically. They're a very cool unit, but they don't have that same morale, unfortunately. Um, they certainly look very good, and I'm just enjoying watching this close-up now, actually. I mean, there's plenty of room going on, so you can see lots of individual little fights. I mean, look, there's my guy getting owned there. Look at that, smack down. Um, these guys will be more upgraded, so they'll be holding them, but Feudal Knights are better than Broken Lances. Because, the, I mean, they've got basically the same melee and attack and defense stats, but the morale stats on the Feudal Knights is higher, so they should survive the fight longer. Um, but these guys are more upgraded, so they'll be fighting fairly well here to the bitter end. Let's catch... I mean, there's any fights at Swedes, and I want to try and catch everyone's fights if possible. But at the moment, no one's really in a scrapping fight off the walls except for me, so... So we might as well keep watching this.
I mean, Venetian Heavy Infantry, they will clean up Feudal Knights. Um, mostly clean up any sword unit in the game except for Conquistadors. Um, they've got a few flank shots going on as guys here, so it's doing kind of well. But my guys are a bit more exhausted than his, so that's also slowing me down. And there's a lot of missile fire coming in on me as well. So all these things are kind of mounting up to stop me from breaking through them. But my guys are, as I said, Feudal Knights are superior. Noble Knights are definitely superior. Look at that, look at that. Oh, straight in the... Did he actually stab him in the ass then? <laughs> oh, man, it's just epic. It's, it's, it's really epic. Because you could not sit and enjoy these while you're actually playing the game because you're obviously too busy actually playing. And the game actually tends to lag when you're playing it. But when you watch the replay, all the lag is gone. So here's um, Pike and Shot bringing some more Broken Lances and trying to kind of sandwich me, which is smart. So I believe at this stage I asked um, the Snack to come and help me, but I believe he's going to have to leave some units behind because he himself will get squished in a minute. So he has to leave units behind. And he hit some Hashishim. I didn't notice that. Um, probably hidden because that's what they can do, obviously. So let's try and watch this Christian Guard fight as well. So most of the major fights in this area down here. Because I don't think Captain Invisible can do much. And his pie Hellbirds will just get absolutely destroyed. That way to do deadly squat really against those swords. So here we have some of these Christian guard fighting in here. Um, I must admit that Christian guard's armor isn't all that interesting. It's a very good unit, but I've never found their armor to look all that interesting to be honest. I, and you can't upgrade their armor either, so it'd be kind of cool if they had some more variation in that way. But they're a good unit, believe me, one of the better sword units in the game. It's a good unit, and they definitely give the more. I think, in my opinion, the Moors are probably the best. Be, I find the Moors to be the most fun um, of the Arab factions to use and they're probably the best really because they've got the good sword units and some very good cavalry they don't really have good missile units but the other factions are missing in some areas so here uh, bring a cav round, we can't do anything with it though here I do win this fight up here um, as you can see um, these halberds are almost immediately breaking upon coming out here so I mean he just shouldn't have bothered with them he should have brought far more swords but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I know he's used them to good effect in the um, in Miller in the on the field battles, but sieges are different, so you've got to be quite careful. It's all about how much swords and axes and stuff you can get down. So we're fighting basically in my vicinity now, for the most part. I don't think there's much else fights going on anywhere else. I do believe he has Swedes fighting a bit here with his Arab. Just mounted Christian. Sorry, it's just mounted Arab, yeah, Arab guys, but they'll get defeated quite easily by broken lances. But I do believe, yes, Swedes managed to get up onto the walls with his archers, actually. Um, my walls are fairly contested still, so I can't afford to put my archers up there, to be honest. Here's the main gate fight, but I can't really get through his pikes. I have managed to get them to break most of their formation up, but he's got broken lances supporting, so... And the towers will continue to fire as well, so there's not much I can do about that. Cause the thing is, it's kind of annoying in Medieval 2. Even if you have men captured, like, capture the tower right next to it, as long as there's an enemy infantry unit standing nearby, the tower will still remain enemy control. Very annoying, because it means it can still fire at you, even though your men have essentially in a position to capture it, so it's kind of stupid. That way, I didn't do that in Rome Total War, so... Um, something I don't like about Medieval 2 sieges. As you can see, uh, these urban militia and various Christian Guard and stuff are basically on their last legs. And my, my Noble Knights are still holding on, but they probably won't be able to win. I've got his Venetian archers here, fighting on pretty hard uh, pike and shots. I think the Venetian archers were a good choice, actually, for a siege, because... With crossbowmen, they're far less effective if they have to fire in an arc, and there's a good chance they're going to have to do that in a siege. So the Venetian archers were a better choice. So the and militia are getting pretty bashed up there. I'll do a bit better down here on the ground, but I'm not really sure why you brought so many of them, because I just don't think they would have been that effective. So over here, um, Cosweed's got some archers up on the walls. Um, he's actually managing to win. Or at least look like he's winning, but I mean these Venetian heavy infantry have got some serious upgrades on them, and these are pike and shots ones, so they're fresh and ready, and these guys are all fairly exhausted. So, um, oh no, they are exhausted. I take it back. No, they're not. They're fresh. That was one of Bob's units here I mixed in. I think. Some pretty nice close-ups here. I think it's it's really great just to sit and watch some nice close-ups. Something we always love doing at Total War. Um. But this stage, we, we all know we're stuffed, but we're going to fight on. Absolutely badass. And I think the problem is, 
we probably I probably should have said some artillery, like at least some like you know traditional artillery, no cannons or anything, no gunpowder artillery, just stand artillery. Um, and then I should have given Pike and Bob less money. They had fifty thousand, and we had forty five thousand. Usually defenders. Well, it depends. It just depends. I mean, I figured since the castle was only a wooden castle that I'd give the defenders more money because there's three of us and two of them. But these defences and the fact that between the two of them they had 25,000 each and we only had 15 each, uh, none of our infantry units were strong enough to take on these, particularly when they had Venetian heavy infantry. So I probably gave them too much money, but... Oh, well, it was still epically fun. Um, here, some of the... Venetian units come down, so these Holy Roman Empire calves should be able to wipe them out pretty good, actually. And I see that these guys are here. However, I got the annoying, there's an annoying glitch that happens. Look at this, look at that, they didn't use their lance. And when they don't use their lance, they do no damage, honestly. And it's a problem I've noticed in Medieval 2 quite frequently at the moment, is that the cavalry are not putting their lances down, and it's extremely aggravating. I decided to send my Highland archers in here, but he's going to retreat back to the city because my lances, my guys will put their lan, lan, guys will put their lances down eventually, and when they do, I'll be able to destroy that unit. So it doesn't always happen, but when it does happen, it's a very frustrating little thing because basically a cab that doesn't use its lance is like nowhere near as effective. But as you can see, um, a few of my guys are holding on up here on the walls, um, trying to fight out the last of his men. I do believe Swedes might have some men left over here. Yes, he's still fighting over here. But we know the um, he must have run out of arrows, much in the same way I must have run. I've run out of arrows as well, so I'm trying to fight it on out here. Um, the river, it's a very cool unit, Noble Highland Archers, actually. Got some care fighting my way in here. Look, I'm fighting, all, like fighting inside the ram, broken ram, and all that. It's so cool. you got to admit... Um, it's an oldish game now, but it's still got some of the awesomest sieges. Um, even though the pathfinding can sometimes be a bit annoying, overall it's been a really fantastic game. Um, but we, we didn't really stand much of a chance. I mean, if you looked here in the centre, there's still still Venetian heavy infantry in good numbers, still pikes, and still the, the, the standard, which would have boosted their morale. So we, we really wouldn't. Um, and here's a unit of Puppies Crossman over here. We really just wouldn't have gotten through I think as I said before just I gave to I gave them too much money really um, because I mean it's not that it couldn't be done but we just I mean without the artillery I didn't really think it would be as hard as it was to be honest but it turns out it was pretty difficult so um, it doesn't matter though it was still an absolutely awesome game and this has been a fun upload um, it's been fun recording this so um, but it's essentially over now um, I do believe Swedes is not really fighting anymore on his side and well, we got 61% of them, so it's more than half, but it's not still not that great. So at least some of your Swedish archers, and I believe this might be my some of my remaining guys left uh, still fighting up here, but they're mostly dead. So I do believe we're essentially stuffed at this point. I do believe I decided to send the rest of my archers up the ladder there to try and finish these guys off, help Swedes archers that are fighting on the walls. And I think that's essentially it. The thing is, these long sieges too, usually, like when you're commentating, your throat gets really dry. So if I do a long siege, I will have to have like a much longer siege. If I do some of the other sieges, um, I will definitely need to um, have a glass of water or a bottle of water with me because otherwise I'm going to get a real dry throat. So I mean, the thing is, when you do these sieges, as fun as they are, um, you have to always remember too before I. When you do a siege, it's always longer than it's like. What I mean is, when you're actually doing it, than when you record it, because there is always a, a sort of an undertone of lag in Medieval 2. It's just the game's poorly optimized, unfortunately. It's not always there, but it comes in varying amounts. Um, and in a siege, it's usually quite a bit of well, not quite a bit, but it just it, it can vary. Um, it wasn't too bad in this siege because it wasn't massive, but um, me and Swedes and did some have done some good ones of late, but they just dragged on for ages. Um, now, unfortunately, you can sometimes you get desync as well, and um, we had an incident the other day when we did a siege where um, uh, the game desynced, and I, I wanted to, I wanted to, I had to drop the desync player, and when I when I dropped him, it kicked everyone out of the game. So it must, everyone must have actually desync. I didn't realise that, and one of the players got real angry with me and accused me of 
you know, rage quitting because we were losing and stuff, which we actually weren't. We were winning, or at least that's what it was showing on my screen that we were winning. So it must have been decent on everyone's screen because he said he was winning and we said we were winning. So uh, sometimes there can be misunderstandings like that, but it's just medieval too. The optimization's not as good as it could be. So what I'm trying to say is, um, like, uh, you'll get lag and you can sometimes get some desync with these sieges, but um, once you actually get the replay, it's a bit it's quicker, but not as long as it seemed like it was, I guess is the term. So, I mean, like, like it might, for instance, have taken you, say, an hour and a half to do a siege, and the actual thing, it might only actually be, say, a 50-minute siege, or, you know, an hour siege, and that half an hour was all lag, so I've noticed that. Like, this battle took much longer. Like, it's taken me a while, probably, probably, like, 25 to ha half an hour, 25 minutes to half an hour to do this, and it took about an hour to actually do it. So, um, there is lag in these sieges, and you just have to live with it with Medieval 2, but... Um, when you get the, it's rewarding when you get the replay because you can watch it without the lag in the replay it's great um, and, and occasionally you get desync I found it's not always a permanent thing and I think I'll just triple speed to the end here because we're about to lose Our men are under attack. and I do believe Swedes just admitted defeat and I'm just fighting to the bitter end so let's watch these guys fight on and yeah I think that's essentially us defeated. I think that was me admitting defeat then. Yep, we're all... So 66% of theirs and 92% of us, so we were pretty thoroughly trounced that fight. But I think, uh, having looked over, I really just gave them too much money. I mean, look at Paladin Bob. He got 2,020 kills. What an absolute fiend you were in this fight, Bob. I mean, that is insane. <laughs> I mean, I come up with 608... Swedes with 591. As you can see, Captain Invisible only 297. It's not that he's certainly a good player. We've played with him before, and um, and he's a good player. But the problem was he had too many Halberd militia, and it didn't give him nearly enough kills there too. So I mean, I mean, look at Bob though. He had all. I'm, I'm gonna. Have, if you're watching this, Bob, tell us how many Venetian heavy infantry had you had. I reckon you must have had at least eight at the minimum. But I reckon you had more than that. So um, be interesting to see if he leaves a comment for us on that. Um, because it was honestly, I mean, look at those kills. I mean, he got more than twice his ally easily, so um, I think we just gave him too much money. I, was, I mean, to be able to field that many Venetian heavy infantry with that many upgrades, I mean, even with three of us, it was really just way too hard. So uh, if we have a look here, these noble swordsmen, 56, 60, 75, pretty good. The feudal knights, not so great. As you can see, look, 20, 18, stuff. That those Venetian heavy infantry just owned them. Some of the Highlanders, the Noble Archers, only one of them did very good. So, I mean, even for me, only a couple of my units did very well. Other than that, they got smashed. I mean, those those Venetian heavy infantry, honestly, are superb, superb infantry. It's just when they got so many upgrades. So, I think in future, if we do this, I'll actually give the attackers more money and perhaps less to the defenders, based upon the quality of the defenders, of skills, obviously. And I know Pike's an experienced medieval two player, and Bob is a natural defensive player. So I probably honestly gave them way too much money and made, too, made it much too hard for myself, Swedes, and Captain Invisible. But it was still an awesome game. We got some beautiful close-ups there. So um, great game to these guys. Um, and of course, I'm going to link Swedes' channel and Bob's channel. Be sure to check those out. Um, and I mean, it was absolutely awesome. Just an awesome game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So. Um, be sure to check those guys' channels um, and leave comments, guys. Honestly, as a YouTuber, it is always nice to read comments about the videos because if it, if it does go into it, so I mean, even just a little comment on your opinions, your thoughts, whatever it is, guys. I'm all up for constructive criticism. If you you know if you feel I did something, I could do something better. It's always good to hear new things like that. So um, do leave some comments, guys. Honestly, it's really really nice to read comments. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this and. Elite Legionary off. Larry I signing off for now.